Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, Home with Kimberly. I am so glad you are with me today because I have been looking forward to doing this video for quite some time and uh, finally decided to just get everything out and sit down and make it. So as you can see on the title, we're talking about emergency preparedness today, long, more long-term food storage. Of course, emergency preparedness this does not just mean food and water, it means a lot of other supplies too. Um, but today I'm focusing just mainly on food and um, water. I have been interested in prepping for a long time and have kind of done it off and on throughout the years, but got really serious as many of us did when 2020 came about and have really tried to keep, um, you know, always keep things on hand, keep building my stores. And especially now with everything going on with Russia and Ukraine, um, you know, I think a lot of us are even more so feeling that urgency to uh, be prepared, you know, if we, can't afford to buy groceries or with the supply chain interruptions, if there's a cyber attack, power goes out, whatever. So I just wanna take you along and show you some things that I have been doing over time. This is not stuff that I have accumulated all at once. I just went out and bought all this at once. A lot of this is stuff I've been doing over time and I'm gonna to continue to do um, just to keep things stored and stocked in my pantry. So I'm starting over here. As you can see, these are my home canned goods. And I love canning. You've seen me do some canning videos on my channel. I will be doing more of those in the near future. Um, and these last a long time. Now, I believe, you know, the general rule of thumb, they say one year, maybe two years. Honestly, guys, if you store this stuff properly, it will last for years and years. Store it in a cool, dark place. Um, just make sure there's always a good seal. You hear that pop when you open these up and if there's no mold or anything in there, these are good for a very long time. But I, I rotate through my canning stock pretty frequently. I love my home canned goods. I don't just can stuff and then stick it there and then forget about it and forget to open it. I actually go through, rotate, use my things. So I have things like carrots, um, pinto beans. I have several pinto beans. I'm going to be doing a lot more pinto beans because um, they're just good in so many things. Bacon. Oh man, if you guys have not canned your own bacon or didn't know you could do that, I need to do a video on that for you. It's awesome to have bacon uh, put back on your shelf, shelf stable. These are baked beans. I'm not sure why I didn't label that, but um, these are baked beans that I did probably a month or two ago. I will write that on here just so I kind of know the date ham and split pea soup, ham and bean soup. Zupa Toscana is one of my very favorite soups. I eat this all the time in the fall and winter and I've canned it up on my shelf and I believe I only have two of these uh, jars left because I love this so much. So really good. Chicken thighs. Now a great thing to can and one thing I'm really gonna start focusing on more is canning more meat great way to have protein on your shelf. Um, I mean, it's great if you can, you know, if you want to and are able to buy and afford canned meat from the store, but it's certainly getting a lot more pricey now. This is a great, more cost-effective way to do it. And I mean, you can just use it in so many things. I always, I also can ground beef, ground turkey, which I'm actually out of. Um, so I really need to get going, restocking that back up. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list of all my home canned items, guys. I have a ton of home canned items. I've really been focusing on eating through them more because I'm planning on moving in June and it's going to be a cross country move. And I was just concerned about having to move with a bunch of home canned goods. Um, so that's kind of why I haven't been canning as much. I've been trying to eat through more of this. Um, but definitely when I get on the other side of that move, I'll be canning again like crazy. So these are things, not only will they last a long time, but you can also use these, you can rotate through these on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So great um, kind of multitasking item like that. Same with these, I just wanted to give you guys an example. So I do have some canned soups. I like the clam chowder, I like the bean and bacon. These are great long lasting shelf items, but also items I can go ahead and rotate through if I want. And I'm going to write the dates on all of these. A lot of people said write the dates 
like with a Sharpie up front so you can see, I think that's a great idea. So I am gonna start dating these so I can know. But even on these guys, these are the best buy dates on this stuff. And by no means does that mean you have to have had it eaten by then or throw it out. Um, this stuff lasts way beyond the best buy dates. So again, a great long-term food storage item, relatively inexpensive, and also something you can rotate through in your normal pantry. Other things that I like to stock up on, which you saw, if you just saw my recent grocery haul, I'll link it down below. This particular spaghetti sauce, my son loves it. So I try to keep stocked on spaghetti sauce. Um, it's spaghetti. I've got different uh, fruits, canned fruits, like these are sliced peaches. Definitely, you guys know I stock lots of jam and peanut butter because my son goes through those like crazy. These are relatively inexpensive items that you can get um, to start stocking up. And again, if you're brand new to this and you're just wanting to start getting into having, you know, a three week, a one month, a two, three month supply, whatever it is, start small, you know, just start. If you've only got like five bucks to spend a week, you know, get a thing of peanut butter if your family likes that or whatever, if it's spaghetti sauce or if it's specific soups, you know, just start five, $10 extra a week if you can and just start slowly adding to. You don't have to get the stuff all at once. Something else that we really like are oats. So I have, um, these are in my, what I call my working pantry that I frequently rotate through. I have a few of those as well as this August and Farms big rolled oats. Uh, it's 108 servings. So I am gonna keep stocking a lot more of these bigger container of oats because they will last forever practically and we will eat them. So don't stock things. Again, don't stock things that you won't eat. Any Everything that I'm showing you here is stuff that we all use and eat. There's nothing here that I just got out of panic and like, oh, you know, we gotta have this, we gotta have that. And I did that. I used to do that when I very first started trying to prep and put back stuff. You would buy these random things that you see all these other, you know, preppers buying and they're quote unquote prepper items. Oh, I need to have that. But then, you know, eventually if I opened it up and tried it, maybe it was something that's like, ew, I don't really like that. Don't don't waste your money on things that you, you and your family will not actually eat. Um, I think this is a good item to have stocked up in your prepper pantry and I'm not talking about this brand I'm not affiliated I'm not affiliated with any of the brands I'm showing you here um, I'm just talking about protein powder in general I think is a great thing to have on hand um, just you know it's protein powder it's an extra source of protein so if you ever got low on protein of course you know I mean I use this from time to time anyways on a regular basis but if you're in a situation where you're running low on protein that's a great alternative source of protein to have I keep stocked up on black eyed peas, green split peas, great northern beans. Of course, my huge thing of pinto beans. I've got all kinds of other beans too. And you guys know my jasmine rice. I love jasmine rice. I have several of these. So these are just, again, to give you an idea of things that I stock up on. Um, this is not an exhaustive list of everything that I have. Um, but these are all things that I will use and eat. Like I love, I love split pea soup. You can see I've even canned some of that up. Um, great Northern beans. I love having these on hand for ham and bean soup. I like black eyed peas. And it's funny, I grew up in the Midwest and I never, I never had a black eyed pea until I was like well into my twenties. Um, we grew up with mashed potatoes. Typically potato was our starch of choice. And even rice, very, very rarely did we have rice. I mean, typically it was, um, rice, you know, out of a box. If we did have rice as a side, like a rice and roni or something, because we just gravitated more to potatoes and macaroni and cheese and stuff. But now that I'm an adult and I've tried different things, I actually, I love black eyed peas. I love red beans and rice. Um, I, like I said, jasmine's my favorite. I love pinto beans. Um, there's just a variety of uses. Of course, you know, you put these two together, you've got a whole protein source. So again, I just want to reiterate, this is things that we will eat um, not things that will go to waste. So coming up front here, milk is something that I'm really trying to store more long term, um, especially my youngest son loves milk. So I have this Hoosier Hill Farm whole milk powder um, and I believe the shelf life on it is good for a year. So I do want to start cycling through that here soon and I would like to kind of mix them together 
and you know refrigerator and see if I can give it to my son to see what he thinks um, because I'm really trying to look for some really good shelf stable milk that I know he would drink if I couldn't get fresh milk on hand again that's why I got the organic whole horizon milk these are more expensive um, but I know he will drink these I mean these are the actual milk but they don't last quite as long as what I had hoped well at least the best buy date is from I want to say five or six months and again I'm sure these are like anything you can probably go well beyond the best buy date if you store these properly but um, I know my son will drink those so I do want to get more of those on hand and then I've got the Thrive Life um, powdered milk so the particular milks that I have on hand thus far especially regarding the powdered milks are ones that when I look through the reviews people said they tasted delicious like um, a lot of people are saying between the Thrive and the Hoosier Hill, you know, it tasted like regular milk. They couldn't really tell the difference. And that's what I'm really looking for for my family because, like I said, my son loves to drink milk. So uh, definitely want to keep stocking up on more of those. And then this is just another option. Of course, everybody knows ramen noodles. You probably think prepper pantry, you think off the bat ramen noodles. And I do keep a stock of those, and especially the spicy flavored ones my daughter loves. So I keep those stocked up on hand. Um, not only do they last a long time, but you can rotate those through your regular working pantry as well. And then I've really started focusing more on um, really longer term, like 25 to 30 year shelf life foods. So I do have these foods from Thrive Life. I already showed you the milk. Um, I've got pineapple and apple. This is a scrambled egg mix. And then I've got a butternut squash and mashed potatoes. And speaking of mashed potatoes, I have several of these. These are a great instant option to have potatoes just, you know, um, add water, maybe a little milk or powdered milk. I don't even know if you have to have mil milk with these or not, but it's a great option to have on hand, something extra. And again, with the long-term items I have from Augustine Farms, the buttermilk pancake mix, the diced bell peppers, and I have powdered honey. Now for these items, for freeze-dried items in particular, um, I really try to wait until they go on sale and a lot of times like I got the this was like seven eight bucks for the pancake mix I'm gonna say this was between ten and twelve dollars for the diced bell peppers those were half off so freeze dried items as you know if you've ever looked into that can be very expensive oh and I do have this classic spaghetti from Mountain House because my son loves spaghetti but um I don't know, I need to open this up and try this out before I buy more. Again, this one was on sale, but I need to open this up and let him try it first because if he ends up not liking it, then I don't need to go crazy stocking that. I'm sure it's something I would eat. Um, maybe, maybe some of us would eat, but um, I did that mainly for him. So I need to let him try that and see if he likes it. And I did get the chunk chicken breast. Like I said, you can get canned meats too. They can tend to be more expensive though. Um, but back to what I was saying, I try to get these freeze dried items when they are half off or more because they can be quite pricey. And again, these are all freeze dried items that we will eat, that we will use. I'm not buying anything that um, is just gonna sit on my shelf and never, never be used. But I have the option with these two though. Most of these are 25 to 30 years shelf life. So that's a great option that I can let these sit for a good long while really accumulate my stores before I decide um, to start working through those. And then I showed you my huge thing of rolled oats. Again, I'm really gonna stock up on that. Oh, I don't have out on the table, but I have like 10 pound bags of flour. Um, I've got sugar, lots of sugar, baking powder, baking soda. I do have yeast packets, um, but I also have my own sourdough starter. Um, you guys have probably seen a few videos on that. I'll link those below. Um, it's a great thing to have your own sourdough starter so you don't have to depend on commercial yeast and it's a lot healthier. Water. Um, as far as water, I have a lot of water. Obviously, I can't stick all that out here, so that's why I only have two bottled waters. I've really tried to transition over to the gallon size waters because I have a tight, I have a smaller space here where I'm at right now. And um, the gallon size are kind of easier to stack and store. So I've been trying to get more of those, but Number one, they're becoming harder and harder to find. Number two, they're becoming very expensive. I used to be able to get them for like 99 cents and now they're well over a dollar. Um, but I am trying to stock up more on those because I live in the desert right now. So water is 
a big thing for me that I need to keep on hand, even though unfortunately it does take up a lot of space. It's just something that I don't wanna be caught without. Also water filtration systems. So I do have a life straw, a personal water filter. As you can see on the picture, you're supposed to be like able to stick this down into very dirty water, stagnant water, and just be able to drink right out of it. So I do have that as well as this little global emergency gear water filter kit. Um, and it's supposed to have like a spigot and, and instructions um, to be able to filter water with that. Ideally, I would really like to get a Berkey. That's on my list of things to get for sure, but I'll probably wait till sometime after I move um, and have more ready, ready access to water. Um, because again, I'm in the desert right now anyways, so you know, water is something I just kind of have to buy and, you know, I buy clean filtered water. So this, I am very happy to have, this is a more recent purchase, but going along with all of this stuff, if the power would go out and, um, you know, I need a way to heat a lot of this stuff up. I mean, some of this stuff you can just eat right out of the jar, right out of the can. It's already cooked. It's ready to go. Is that very palatable? Probably not. Would I get my kids to eat that that way? Probably not. So they're going to want their things hook, cooked and heated through. So I did just invest in this little um, butane stove. It came with these four butane containers. And came in this nice little case. And it's just the one burner. Stick wrapping off so you can see. So it's just the one burner. And then the little butane canister goes in this part. Now I have read, um, it says you can use these indoors. Uh, they recommend cracking like a door or window, but more than likely I would just take this outside and try to use it. So I have a way, an alternate way to heat up and cook food. I also have a small little charcoal, little small charcoal grill, which I'm not allowed to actually even use where I'm at right now. However, in a situation where, you know, everything went down and you needed a way to cook your food. Um, I'm not really worried about whether anybody cares if I'm grilling or not grilling. My point with that being, I am gonna stock up on some extra charcoal. Um, again, giving me just another alternate way to cook food should I need to do so. So this, you guys, is not by any means an exhaustive list of things you can do. I hope it gave you just some good ideas um, of even where to start if you are new to stocking up your pantry more to, to the prepping community. Um, I hope there are some things in here that you saw you're like, yeah, you know, I can start putting that back for my family. So um, again, today's focus was more on the food and water component, not only to have food and water, but filtration system and a cooking system. There's a lot more to being prepared. I mean, toilet paper, paper towels, lighting, uh, you name it. There's so many things um, that you can add in over time, but if, especially if you're brand new, this is where you need to start. You need to start with your food and water first and foremost. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I will be doing more prepping videos. Um, coming up and I'm going to be showing you very soon here how I'm setting up my little outdoor garden area um, on my patio just to be more self-sustaining. I already showed the video of my little hydroponic garden and I will give you an update on that as well and I'll link that video down below. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, please comment down below things that you're doing, suggestions you have, um, anything you know that would be helpful to someone else. Please do leave that comment down below. And thank you so much for watching you guys and I will see you in the next video. Take care. God bless. Bye.